and every one of us this day. And as I, your servant, stand before you, I pray that I would decrease and you would increase. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. As we are describing the artist and soul, last week, if you'll remember, we talked about the temple, the construction of the temple, and all of the plans that David had been given by God and passed on to Solomon, and just how intricate all of that detail was, what God wanted done for his place of worship. And not only did God have those very specific details in place, um, he, God was also going to raise up the craftsmen to be able to bring about and care for that work. And so we think about that God who pays attention to all of the details, and then we hear that echoed as we consider today the psalm that we started with and Jeremiah the prophet, because God, as our great our artisan as this potter, God takes us as the unformed substance and shapes each and every one of us from the time we are within our own mother's wombs until the last moment that we have on this earth and beyond. God is shaping and forming us, taking us like lumps of clay and working with us. Um, it's interesting to think about the echoes that we have in the scripture, because as we heard in that psalm, this God who knew us when we were being knit together, those were the words that God used as he called Jeremiah to be a prophet, to speak to the people of Israel, because they were, as often happened, they were all turning away from God. They were a wayward people. And God wanted them to return to know and love the Lord with all their hearts, mind, soul, and strength. And so God called Jeremiah for this time in history to speak to the people of Israel. And he told the prophet this. He said that he was the God who knew him even before he was born. And that God had this plan in place for him. He knows every single day that is to be lived for each and every one of us. So as God speaks to Jeremiah, he's saying, you have to go and tell the people of Israel to turn back to me. And so as Jeremiah has received this word, we come to this place in the scripture where God is calling Jeremiah to learn about his work among the people in a very specific way. Because God says in our passage today, go down to the potter's house. Now I want to stop there for just a moment and think about hearing from God. Now as Jeremiah has received this word from the Lord, God isn't saying go to the temple, go and pray. God isn't saying go and, and meet with me in, in the same way that you're Used to God is telling him to go to the potter's house and so sometimes when we hear that word God may call us to go somewhere and pay attention to the details that are taking place in something we may have experienced before but have missed something along the way where God wants to teach us a new lesson through something that's familiar because Eugene Peterson writes about this encounter but this time, God wanted him to go and learn and understand it in a different way. And he said, so go down to the potter's house. I'll give you instructions about what to do there. And so Jeremiah is experiencing the potter's house. And he goes in and he sees the usual work of the potter. The potter is sitting at his wheel and he's working on something. I don't know if any of you have experience in pottery and have taken the opportunity to do that before, where you work at the wheel and there's this mound of clay before you and you have to keep your hands on it. I know I, I, 
I've seen before people who let their hands off of it and the clay may start to fly around or pieces may go here and there and everywhere. And then, so the potter has to pay very careful attention to how they are working with that piece. And so Jeremiah sees that the potter has this, this work in his hand and it's flawed. And what the potter does is he takes that piece still in his hands and he starts working on something else. He starts to shape it in a new way. And the Lord's word came to him as, as Jeremiah is seeing the potter at the wheel working with that clay. The Lord says, house of Israel, can't I deal with you like this potter, declares the Lord, like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my house of Israel. At any time, I may announce that I will dig up, pull down, and destroy a nation or kingdom. But if that nation I warned turns from its evil, then I'll relent and not carry out the harm I intended for it. So God is taking the house of Israel, and he has them in the palm of his hands, the same way that that potter at the wheel was manipulating all of that clay into the vessel that he wanted it to become. God had the power. And here's the thing about the clay in the hands of the potter. It's not an easy process at all. It's being shaped and pushed and prodded and molded. And I want you to think about those times in your life when you may have experienced the, the sensation of being prodded and kneaded and stretched and pulled. And it's uncomfortable and you're beginning to feel broken and shattered. But brothers and sisters, in the hands of our master potter, God is taking us the lumps of clay that we are and molding and shaping us into a vessel to be used for God's purposes, each and every one of us. And what that's supposed to become is unique for everybody in here, every single one of us. So some of us might be little dragons that are going to sit on a shelf and be nice to look at, and some of us are going to be bowls that are important for everyday use. Some of us are going to have an ornate glaze, and some of us are going to be more earthenware. But our potter is taking and molding and shaping each and every one of us uniquely. I think that's an important thing for us to consider, those times that we feel most pushed and pressed and stretched. That in the hands of God, we're being shaped into something beautiful. I think about where I was when I was about to graduate from college. Because as we think about our graduates, it occurred to me yesterday was Pastor John and I's 17th wedding anniversary. And so I was thinking back to all of how we ended up together. And when I met Pastor John and decided that I would give him a chance and actually go out with him, <laughs> I had all these plans of what I was going to do when I graduated from college. In fact, the very week that he asked me to go on a date with him, I had just had my interview with the Peace Corps. So it was my plan that I was going to go off to Africa for a couple of years, live among the people and do work there that I'd been preparing for. That was all my hopes and my dreams. And then this guy shows up and messes up all my plans <laughs> in the best way possible. And when we are setting out in our lives, when we are doing what we want to do, when we're making our plans and we're putting all kinds of things into place and taking step after step, it can be easy for us to say, this is how I'm going to live my life and everything is going to line up this way. That works beautifully, doesn't it? <laughs> no, of course not. We think we can control and manipulate and make everything be what we want it to be. But God is the potter. 
God is the one who is taking us and shaping us and forming us and wants us to be used for God's kingdom purposes. And so looking back, I think, wow, it would have been amazing if I had done this, if I had gone down that path, if I'd gone this route. But my life wouldn't be nearly as beautiful as it is right now. And every blessing I have, everything that I give thanks to God for, it would have been completely different had I not listened when God had that voice that said, this is what you're supposed to do, or give that guy a chance. <laughs> Jeremiah went to the potter's house because God told him, go there. And I want you to think about what it is that God may be trying to speak into your life. Where it is you are being pushed and prodded and needed and forced into a shape that might feel a little uncomfortable for you right now. But yet God, in his work, is the one who's bringing something beautiful out of that situation. It could be that our potter is whispering to you, saying, go and leave that opportunity and try this door instead. Or God is saying, go to that neighbor and talk to them because you know they're on your heart and they need to know my love through you. Or God might be saying, you need to go and volunteer your time in this ministry because this is what I designed you to do. Whatever it is, God, the master potter, is taking each and every one of us and working his magic, his artistry, to create for every single one of us a beautiful offering for this world that only you and I can be in the image of God. Only you or I can bear that creator's mark in that way. As we go forward... I pray that each of us will listen and heed what our potter is trying to do, not fight against it. Because the saddest thing about this lesson in the scripture is that after Jeremiah told all of the people of Israel, this is what you need to do to turn back to God, they didn't do it. They didn't listen. Because they said, no, the situation is too hopeless. We are too broken. God has abandoned us. And as they turned even farther away from God, they experienced the exile and the separation from their Lord. However, the story still isn't over, amen? Because even in that moment, even when they turned away from God, God is still at work in their hearts, even today. God is still at work in every single one of us, even today. The potter has not left the wheel. The potter's hands are still moving and holding and forming each and every one of us. God is not finished with this work that God is bringing into the world. But I pray that we may be a people, every single one of us, who heed our master and allow our God to shape us with all of his artistry. Thanks be to our Lord, who isn't finished with us, who takes this substance that we are and shapes it into something beautiful. And I pray that all of us as God's worthy vessels can do the work for which we are created in this world. Amen.